Hey guys, 47 Cartoon Guy here, and welcome to the first episode of a new segment called The Fantastic Legacy of Hanna-Barbera Minisodes, where I take a quick look at several well-known specials and TV movies from the Hanna-Barbera Library, in between parts of the retrospective documentary. And today, we're going to start off with the Flintstones on the Rocks. Tonight, can the Rubbles save their best friend's marriage? Happy Anniversary! You forgot! Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater presents The Flintstones on the Rocks. Okay, so I'm kind of cheating here a bit. See how this particular special had no involvement from William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, nor was it produced by their studio. Instead, being one of the first productions at the then new Cartoon Network Studios, which became a separate facility from Hanna Barbera at the William Hanna's death in 2001. But I want to talk about this special simply because I found it interesting. Having seen it when it first aired in 2001, it left me pretty confused. But I was a kid back then. Now that I'm an adult, I'm going to see if this special was an underrated classic or was it forgotten for a reason. Let's find out. On the Rocks came from that weird period from the late 90s and early 2000s where Time Warner were rebranding a lot of the old Hanna Barbera characters to the baby boomers who grew up with them. After their ability to entertain kids were starting to wear off. These new incarnations were crude, vulgar, cynical, and in many ways, more popular than the originals. And a lot of Adult Swim original programming came from this era. Not only that, there are also what could have been, like an almost R-rated live-action Scooby-Doo movie, and one-offs, like those weird John K. Yogi Bear and Jetsons shorts. So how come when he does something awful, he's my son? And when he does something good, he's your son? Shut up! Flintstones on the Rocks debuted on Cartoon Network's Cartoon Theater on Saturday night, November 3rd, 2001, during a double feature with the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. And I have to say, it's pretty jarring when you see your favorite childhood characters act like this and then suddenly see them act like this. It was directed by Dave Smith and Chris Savino. The latter is best known as the creator of Nickelodeon's The Loud House and other things. The plot revolves around Fred and Wilma, whose marriage is on death's door. The opening scene sets the tone perfectly. I think you better run. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Ah! Seeing this, Barney and Betty invite them on a trip to Rocapoco for their anniversary in an effort to save their marriage. But everything seems to be hopeless. Through a mix-up, Wilma discovers a diamond in her suitcase and assumes Fred gave it to her. Fred, taking advantage of this opportunity, goes along with it. But little do they all know the diamond belongs to a burglar who stole it from a jewelry store and is planning to woo Wilma to get it back. You get past the usual Flintstones cliches like slapstick, rock punts, and animal appliances making snide remarks. The special has some quiet and pretty mature moments. The best scenes are like that. For example, I love the opening, where Fred comes home from work and eats dinner with Wilma. There's no dialogue, no music, just eerie silence. Shows how perfectly how far their marriage had fallen. There's another scene towards the end, where Fred spots the thief flirting with Wilma. Now you expect Fred to go and put that guy in his place, but that's not what happens. Instead, Fred sits down and monologues to himself about this failing marriage was his fault and he has himself to blame. It's actually pretty profound. Many modern viewers might also be surprised how much of a dick Fred is. Granted, he was a grumpy curmudgeon with a good heart in the original series. Once the show became more family friendly and Fred became one of Hanna-Barbera's mascots, there was a big push to make him more friendly and soften his character a bit. Here, he's pretty crude, dim-witted, loud, and even unpleasant at times. I kinda like how much of a jerk he was, but that's also one of the things that caught me off guard when I saw it as a kid. I should also talk about the animation and the art style. You see that thick, outline look? That was very popular in the 90s and 2000s, in the same way that soft, thin outline doodle look was popular in the 2010s. Here, the more wonky designs along with the abstract backgrounds are a throwback to the Ed Benedict style of the original series, something that was sorely missing in many of the revivals. 
A lot of the same crew from Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls worked on this, and even Jenny Tarnikovsky was a producer. The designs were done by character designer Greg Kelman, whose work I really enjoyed in films like Hotel Transylvania and last year's Adams Family. In an interview with Chris Savino on an old Cartoon Cartoon Fridays fan site, he mentions the designs were left over from a merchandising promotion for the 35th anniversary, which apparently didn't do so hot. I'm glad they made good use of them here. The one scene everyone remembers is this beautiful stop motion dream sequence by Screen Novelties, the guys behind Robot Chicken. All the voice actors do a fantastic job emulating the originals, like Jeff Bergman, Tress McNeil, and Great Lyle. These are very solid replacements. But the one that surprised me the most was Kevin Michael Richardson as Barney. For the longest time, I thought that was Frank Welker. It's pretty cool, he's got a lot of range. The stuff with the thief does clash with the rest of the film. Granted, it would have been out of place in a regular Flintstones episode, but it's kind of distracting having lumped in with the depressing marriage stuff. Some of the jokes are hit and miss, and the misses can get a little awkward. Like the overly long gags meant to pad the running time, and the Fred and Barney bathing suit scene. This would have been right at home on Simpsons or Family Guy, not the Flintstones. But a lot of the adult jokes work well, presented in a way it will go over a kid's head, but an adult will catch on instantly. Even some of the mean-spirited jokes work. I know you wanted that promotion, Flintstone, so I'm giving it to Rubble. Barney? Flintstones on the Rocks aired again for the final time in March 2002 and didn't have any home media releases. It's not even on iTunes or the Boomerang app. My only guess is the subject matter, which clashes with the more family-friendly fare WB likes to promote. The Flintstones were on a hiatus for the rest of the decade, only continuing to appear in Fruity Pebbles commercials and some very hilarious cameos. The characters will make a comeback in the 2015 directed video movie Flintstones WWE Stone Age Smackdown. It was stupid, but the animation was really good. There's a new show called Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs. I haven't seen it yet, but maybe it'll be good. Seth MacFarlane was planning to do a reboot of the Flintstones in 2013, but it was cancelled. I know many people would disagree with me, but I would have loved to see what he would have done with this. Especially given how big of a fan he is. Now it's been reported that Elizabeth Banks will be producing an adult reboot, which I'm curious to see. I hope it works out because I'd really like to see these characters again. But as is, The Flintstones on the Rocks is a mixed bag. It has its flaws, but what works, really works. The realistic look of how Fred and Wilma deal with marriage troubles is well put together. It's some of the best parts of the film. With a solid cast and some good jokes here and there, it's definitely worth a watch. Check it out if you can. Until next time, I'm 47 Cartoon Guy, and I gotta fly. Hold it. Yabba dabba do. Mm, it's trabajo.